Hey, what's going on, guys? My name is Brandon. Welcome to Audio Addiction, where you can find latest album reviews. You can find our band interviews, and you can find coverage of pretty much anything music related on the channel. Uh, if you're new here, thank you for watching. Thank you for checking out this review. Uh, if you enjoyed this sort of content, make sure to subscribe, share it, like, and subscribe. It goes a long way. I post three banner interviews a week i've been doing a lot more album reviews as of recently this one is a part of a double feature for today which i also did a review of sleeves newest record to better days so check that one out if you're interested um i'll also be doing a review of seforcer's newest record um and some stuff on my twitch stream both possibly thursday and tuesday i know i said that backwards but you know what i mean uh and i'll leave a link in the description for the twitch channel if you want to check that out but tonight we're gonna be talking about good time Tiger's newest record, Raised in a Doomsday Cult. So, for those of you who aren't familiar with this band, they are a band from pretty much across the world, I think. Um, mostly uh, the States and Europe, I believe. Uh, Ellie is, I think, from the, like, Maryland, ba like, uh, uh, Baltimore area. And then I think the rest of the band is mostly from the UK. Um, and they also have Nolly, who does bass for any of their studio work. So, I thought that was very cool. Um, I know he did bass, I believe, on the last record as well. Um, but I was very stoked on this record. I really really like anything generally Elliot Coleman related so uh, I was very stoked on this I'm all I, I just really like Good Tiger as well um, I found out about him with we will all be gone a couple of years ago I did a review of that so if you want to check out how much my review skills suck back then and how they still suck now you can check that out um, but I am going to go through each track on this record give you my thoughts and opinions on it go through some pros and cons and then fish it out with an overall rating so the first track is called Kimball um, I will have to note one thing check out all of the visualizers that they did for each song they are incredibly well done I will leave the artist name right on here because I don't have it up and I didn't write it down like a big dummy uh, so go check his work out incredible work I wanted to give a huge shout outs to him because he he does some really great work and I really enjoyed all of those so go watch them very cool stuff but getting back to the track itself Kimball uh, I really love this one from the get uh, I know that they kind of released them in order I believe um, and I thought that this one was just immediate for me I love the descending guitar riff um, along with the really cool vocal harmonies that they have going going on courtesy of Elliot I think just the vocal production on this record is really phenomenal um, also uh, in con in um, in keeping with this track I love how each layer sounds really really distinct but also equally harmonious as well um i think they do a great job of kind of incorporating a lot of different layers but really making them you know really harmonious and i think it comes out with a really great product at the end of the day um jp bouvet i'm sorry if i butchered that i think i'm pretty sure that's correct but i could be wrong um english is not my strong suit but anyway uh i think his subtle choices in the way that he comes up with some really fantastic drum fills and like riffs i think are really interesting and I was very much like just like in awe of some of the the drumming work that he has done on this record um, which is not to discount Alex Redinger I'm pretty sure I pronunciated that right um, he used to be in like Tesseract and things of that nature um, and I think he's also a fantastic drummer but I think JP it, it just rips this this record wide open and I really appreciate that um, I also like that he's more expressive in the verses and kind of becomes a little bit more I wouldn't say run-of-the-mill but but definitely a little bit more reserved a little bit more thoughtful and the kind of drum patterns he does obviously there's still kind of like pockets of some really greatness but i think he doesn't try to just go nuts 24 7 all the time i think he really is cognitive about you know how he writes and how the drum fills work and i really appreciate that i also dig how like kind of the song flows with the drumming i think that's really well done and i think that has a lot to do with just being you know having all the members really be comfortable with the writing process and being able to 
execute something all together collectively and i think he does a great job i think the whole band does a great job of that um again i was pretty sold on this track pretty immediately um and nothing really has changed every time this track comes on i just get i just get super giddy and just it, it's a extremely tight track um and it also just pretty much shows off how much of a superb vocalist elliot is um if you haven't checked out any of his previous works and also good tiger um i would highly implore you to go check those out but um I, I, he kind of does this great thing where he knows where to belt out and really just kind of hit those strong notes i'd say more specifically in this song in the choruses but also has these kind of tender soft moments um that i think really you know affect kind of the nature of the track um i'd say more specifically in the verses um it remind me a great deal of his previous work zeliac if you haven't checked that out ooh, that's a spicy one go check that one out um but great opener track really enjoyed this one um despite it being kind of a different you know monkey wrench from uh the previous record we will all be gone so we will move it into track number two which is ghost vomit and this one takes no time to get acquainted with you the listener um but also again as i mentioned jp bouvet my guy is doing the work he's doing the lord's work out here the man is moving around the kit that first like four second drum bit oof I, I like it was so cool to hear and i had to rewind it like seven different times because i was just so floored by it um really great drummer i think he adds a lot of great passion and energy to this track um and a lot of the tracks off this record whether it be more you know subtly or subtly or more aggressively in a track like this um the vocal production on this track is really cool as well um as i've been mentioning a lot um i think elliot's harmonies sound like slightly delayed in a weird way and they give it this like really eerie feel which i appreciate there's a lot of kind of like i don't know if there's reverb on there's definitely reverb on it but i don't know how much um it could also just be delay as well um but just the way that they arrange it and also because he's singing at a higher register in the harmonies really make it interesting and I think every time that I listen to it, it's just a standout piece, which I really appreciate. Um, I also love the vocal arrangement itself. I think it's just through the roof. Um, Elliot's range on this track in particular is just damn impressive. Like, again, he's such a solid vocalist. And um, to hear him kind of do just these like mid range sort of stuff and then really hit those really, really, really high falsettos, um, I think is awesome i also love the ebb and flow of this track it really kind of breaks super well um and it was the track that you heard that 10 second clip of in the beginning of this review um i also like that there's a little brief break in the bridge uh that i that was a very big tongue twister and i'm glad i made it through it but i'm probably gonna screw up something very easily um but i think in comparison to their last record we will all be gone as i mentioned this one just has a bit more breath to it i think they took their time to not just put a lot of vocals in a track um and just to just throw it all together it really feels uh collective um you know there's moments where the song just has this really great like movement to it um and it, it doesn't always have to have the need for vocals um and i think that that is what makes this record at least in my opinion uh, that much better and th that much stronger of a record where it doesn't have to always be in your face with vocals you can have that little breath that little space um and it's what makes that track that much interesting really enjoyed ghost vomit go check this one out as i mentioned all visualizers for each track so we're gonna move into track number three which is whatever happens to man's best friend first of all the title of this one on point like it um but the song starts off slow um and i think it really starts setting the tone for the entire song itself um mostly guitars up until around the 16 second mark um that's when elliot comes in to do his singing um and i also think in the verses um it was really cool how he utilizes his like lower register and also the call and response towards the latter half of this the verses in this record or on this song in particular um and i i really think it shows off how um you know how interesting his vocal range can go you know as i mentioned having that lower register but also really hitting those interesting falsetto lines um i think in this track he really kind of runs the gamut vocally which i think is really impressive um i also love how strong the snare hit is in the chorus i don't know if like that was purposeful or not but it just sounds like 
a tank. I don't like it is loud. It is like definitely purposefully loud. I would assume so. Um, and I don't know. Maybe it just might be me, but I really enjoyed the mix on that track. Um, I also love how the bridge basically basically becomes like this big jam session. Um, those riffs on and at the end of that track, ooh, they are primo, courtesy of Joaquin and and Duria. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty pronouncing that right. Probably screwed it up at some point, but um, really enjoyed that. I thought that was really tight. The way that they closed out, the way that they kind of stop and start with like like the guitars, the bass, the drums everything just really hits in a really interesting way and I think it really is very rhythmic and I really appreciate that so as I mentioned really like seven different times but anyway moving into track number four which is uh 1252 uh when I first heard this song in particular I it didn't really hit me as much as I felt like the other ones were and especially with the first three just being absolute bangers um I was a little bit a little bit worried um I, you know obviously i gave the rest of the record a listen but um i was worried because this was a little bit a softer song um i i would say in comparison to the songs that were released at the time and also on this record uh in general um but i just don't feel like it's what stacked up to what they had released at the time um but i would say that this track absolutely grew on me i think the more southern nature of this track really fits well after a pretty you know aggressive sort of track which is you know after whatever happens a man's best friend um elliot's softer tones and timber really are fully utilized in a track like this one you know where he is kind of being a little bit more somber in his in his tonality um and i think a track like this again shows off that ability to do that um i also love the cool like electronic motif that carries throughout the entire song you hear it towards the beginning um and it is kind of you know integrated throughout the entire song uh i would say this one is a sleeper i know there's a few people out there that really enjoy this one a lot and would consider that to be one of their favorites um but i would consider this one to be a sleeper song and i think that once you listen to it you're like eh, i don't know if i like it i would give it a, a few more listens and i i think you'll really come to love this one uh as well as the other ones that have been released so we're gonna move it into track number five which is young speak um I do have to get something off my chest, which I think maybe has to do with just the amount of music that I listen to, but every time that I hear this guitar riff, for some reason it reminds me of a sped up or expansive version of the demo that Nolly does uh, for the Archer type uh, amp sim. I don't know if that was purposeful or not. Obviously nolly works with good tiger so i feel like maybe it might be the same thing or i might just be like some dumb conspiracy theorist on good tiger which i would totally be okay with but um it does feel very reminiscent and i went back and listened to the clip and it kind of sounds similar in terms of tonality and the and the guitar phrasing um so i could be wrong but it does feel very much along those lines. But anyway, had to get that off my chest. I felt like, you know, I had to put that out uh, out in the ether. But uh, anyways, really enjoyed, the, enjoyed this track. I think that the ethereal lead lines in this track really make it for me personally. Um, I, I think they it makes it really sound expansive, really makes it sound open. Um, the guitar work is absolutely the highlight of this track in particular. Um, I would also say that there's this really interesting groove that JP does at around the 2 minutes and 11 second mark to around the 2 minutes and 33 second mark. Again, JP is really just ripping it up on this record. And I think that just, again, this more subtle nature of the drum drum stuff he does on this record really makes it more interesting as me as a reviewer to find out. Um, but I enjoyed this one as well. Solid choice, solid overall song. And I thought it was interesting. So we're going to move into track number six, which is Redshift. Also, I love that they continued kind of the colored variation. Uh, I think they had blue shift on the previous record. Um, we will all be gone. So maybe they'll do a yellow shift on the next record. Who knows? But I think that would be very interesting to kind of fill the, the primary color gambit. But I really got nerdy art on you just for that second. But anyway, getting back to the track particularly, uh, the guitar facts the guitar effects on this song are really tight i love um the way that they utilized it it's really got this oh it's got this really cool like delay like 
lo-fi kind of chorusy feel to it and i thought it was very interesting um i also appreciate that the bass and the drums carry most of the weight on this song obviously there are guitar parts obviously elliot does sing on this track as well um but it was a cool reversal of roles and i i'm definitely all for it i think whenever you get a chance to hear you know songs that have more of a drum and uh bass sort of feel to them i think it's a nice approach and i i I also feel like it doesn't always put the pressure melodically on you know the vocalist or the guitar player it really makes it interesting um and i think it makes it a little bit more robust in my mind um as i mentioned earlier there's this cool electronic feeling to it i think there might be some like extra like electronic synths and pads on this track that really kind of fill out some of the more uh empty spaces of this song in particular I would say that this one's pretty experimental in terms of just the sound qualities, the things that they use. Um, but overall, I love the chorus. I think that that's probably one of my favorite portions of the song. Um, I think it's super infectious. The hooks are on point. I think Elliot does a great job vocally, um, as he does in general. Um, probably my favorite portion of the song in particular is the bridge. Um, just because those great guitar riffs they really came out super well and i think it just really hits the song off in a gr good crescendo so we're gonna move into track number seven which is animal mother um this one feels like something that would be off the previous record um and definitely in that sort of vibe so i i wouldn't be surprised if this was one of the first songs that they had written uh for this latest record um but it does have that more proggy feel to it as as most of the songs off this record do um but also you know heavily leaning on those post hardcore roots which I greatly appreciate. Um, I love the energy of this track. It has a really great groove to it for sure. Elliot's got some insane vocals on this track. Um, and probably one of my favorite portions of the song is at around the 1 minute to 41 second mark to around the 2 minute mark. Super tight. Really like that as well. Um, this one was a solid track. Nothing too crazy to write home about. But overall, if you enjoy just a really high energy, fast rock, post hardcore, progressive feel to it then this is the one to go give a listen to. So we're going to move into track number eight, which is Sun Thrower Flower. And this one's easily one of my favorite tracks off the record. Um, I was immediately sold on this one when I first heard it. I love the vibe that this track gives off. It has a kind of Egyptian sort of Arabic feel to it. Um, and it pairs super well with Elliot's kind of smooth vocal performance, um, which I think is just like absolute butter um everything about this song in particular ranging from the cool guitar riffs to the more forward bass line to jp's really great uh drum work um i think it just really checks off all of the checks dots all the t's uh well crosses off all the t's dots all the i's and i think that again to me objectively it's one of the one of the best tracks off the record um if i had to use one adjective to describe this song i would say buttery just super well done super smooth you know nothing nothing just to me i like i'm at loss for words because it's just that good um i love the bridge it really kind of gets you into more good tiger familiar territory but then kind of picks back up again with the like electronics the layering the kind of egyptian kind of arabic feel to the track really well executed kind of came out of left field at least for me um and i really enjoyed this one a lot so go give sun thrower flower a listen that's my personal recommendation but we're going to move into track number nine which is go go yubari uh again loving the naming conventions they've always been on point but i would say more particularly in this track i think jp is absolutely the highlight of this track his drumming abilities are freaking phenomenal um he has clear moments where he's just got some really awesome drum fills um which is that i'm constantly looking out for and i'm finding some new ones every time i go through and listen to it so really enjoyed that um i also appreciate that they slowed it down in the bridge portion of the song as well um and it shows off more of elliot's higher range um his vocal prowess on this track is super tight um and i like that his harmonies are just on point to me they take the cake for this track along with jp's drumming skills i think that 
both of those two people just do a fantastic job and i think that they really elevate this track to that next level so go check out go go yubari another fantastic song as well so we're gonna move into track number 10 which is grow smile accept um much like Kimball, uh, I really like the guitar work in this track. Um, it's definitely more in that sort of vein of really cool, like melodic lines or like descending melodic lines. Um, and I think that's really cool. I also th like that this one's a bit slower. Um, it plays off more of the melodic subtleties of the band. Um, and also, I think it shows off JP in a different way um, where he's not just going ham. I think it's just a little bit more. Uh, thoughtful it's a little bit more thought out it's a little bit more methodical in the drum parts um, and I think he does a great job in that uh, the vocal layering layering in this track I would say more so the uh, latter half of the song is absolutely nuts I think it really adds a cool dimension to the track um, and almost at times has this sort of like core like choir feel to it which I think is very cool I think they did a lot of vocal layering on it um, to make it really interesting um, and I enjoyed this one a lot too i think there's really i don't really have anything bad to say about it because i'm just really on board with all of the all of what this record is um and enjoy this one a lot so we're gonna move into the track no, last track of the record as i get tongue twisted up uh, which is if you weren't my son i'd hug you and this one is very fitting to be the last song off the record clocking in at just over the seven minute mark at if you want a specific time it's seven minutes and 18 seconds um, but this one has a good flow to it I was a little bit wary because like again a seven minute track is a long song um, so I feel like any song that is above five minutes um, not that I can't focus on listening to a song for seven minutes. It's just like sometimes the sometimes you know when you have a longer song it kind of falters. But um, this one I think has a really great flow to it. As I mentioned earlier, the first verse kind of sounds like there's a guest feature. If not, it might be another member of the band singing, which I think is very interesting. And I'd love to maybe hear a play off of that in future Good Tiger work. Um, but you can clearly hear Ellie in the second verse of the track. It definitely. Is more apparent um, and whoever the vocalist is if it is Elliot that is very damn near impressive because I would have never expected that first half to be Elliot um, but really well done and he's if it's a guest feature or, or it, if it's Elliot he makes his return um, you know periodically through the, through uh, the rest of the track um, I think song wise comparatively to most of the songs off this record it's a little bit slower it takes a little bit more of a time to get built up but um i think the pacing again in this track is pretty well done considering how long it is um there is this spurt of heaviness at around the four minutes and 27 second mark to around the six minute mark it's just all i don't think there's any vocals on it um and it's just this really cool like heavy riff party uh that i'm all for um as well as this track just kind of being very open-ended um I think that they really went for more of a free-flowing ideal pool in this track. Obviously, there's some thought to it, but, um, you know, it is kind of out there. It's a little bit, again, being on the longer side is a little bit, you know, a little bit interesting. But overall, I really enjoyed it. I think it's a well-executed track, um, and I think it is a solid closer track. So, some pros and cons that I have about Good Tiger's record. Um, some pros that I have, Elliot Coleman is one hell of a vocalist um if this record didn't prove or impress you vocally I, I would implore you to give it another listen because vocally not only his actual vocals but also like the harmonies that are attached onto this which is i think to me otherworldly and it's definitely one of my favorite vocal performances of this year in general um but I, I just am floored by how much of a range Elliot has as a vocalist and to see him kind of run through most of it if not all of it in this record is impressive and I think it would be very impressive to other vocalists uh, instrumentally I think it's very creative but also very much uh, to their roots there it does have that progressive post-hardcore feel to it but I think it has it and it approaches it 
from different perspectives. I think in tracks like Whatever Happened to Man's Best Friend, that's a little, or Ghost Vomit, I feel like those are a little bit more straightforward in that kind of progressive uh, post hardcore feel. But then you got tracks like, you know, Sunflower Flowers, you got like Redshift, you've got interesting ways of approaching it in a different way that is also kind of progressive, uh, or not also kind of, it is progressive. Uh, and it's very cool. I love to see them expand upon more ideas that maybe they have in the vault um, because I thought it was very interesting and it didn't feel like it was just like a completely different change of pace for Good Tiger. It, it felt very much in that lane uh, and I appreciated that as well. I think the production is really tight as, as well. Uh, I feel like I have to mention that. Um, I think that uh, I, I know that most of the stuff was self-recorded and then I think they went to Mike Kajin for um, uh, for mastering, I believe. Um, I know it's on their uh, band camp, so you can check that out. Um, as I mentioned, Nolly performs the bass on this record and I think he does a really great job of uh, really holding it down on a lot of the tracks off this record. Um, and I will say that the YouTube streams won't do these songs a justice. I really would recommend listening to this with like headphones on um, or whatever you can listen to him on. I think this is a, a record that's going to sound well in that aspect. But I also feel like it sounds pretty well in the car and with like earbuds and stuff. Uh, but I really enjoyed listening to it in these headphones. I also have Bluetooth headphones. Um, and I think equally they both sounded really tight um some cons that i have about this record i really don't this one's pretty close to flawless for me which would obviously showcase my rating for this record which my overall rating for good tigers raised in a doomsday cult i'm gonna be giving it a 9.8 out of 10 definitely one you should go check out um I think it's going to go under a lot of people's radars, and that is super unfortunate, but I l damn near love this record from front to back. Um, I'm very excited to hear new material from them, and if you're just a fan of some really solid progressive music, as well as some insane vocals and some insane drumming, just instrumentally and vocally insane Give this one a listen. I would highly recommend it. Uh, definitely on my albums of the year. I think that this one could dethrone Loathe at my current number one slot, but it's going to be close. I'm, I'm very, very, I like both of these records very much, and I'm curious how the rest of this year is going to pan out because there's definitely some on my list that I feel like might even dethrone these two. So um, let me know in the comments what you think about this record. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Give me your thoughts on it. It's been out for a couple days now, and I'm very curious what all of y'all think. So uh, let me know. And if you enjoyed this review, I know it's a little bit of a longer one. I go through each song, so they are long. Uh, so I appreciate you for anyone that stuck around to watch the whole thing. It's always greatly appreciated. Um, and if you enjoyed the content, make sure to share it, like it, subscribe. It goes a long way. As I had said earlier, my name is Brandon. We hope you got your fix, and we'll be talking with you soon. Peace.